see one by one. Uh, the first one is uh, what may be the possibility that why in real time there may be a bugs, why the bugs are missed out during the verification plan. So, why because there may be not enough different configurations were tried. So, most of the cases as we expect that, so as the design part it comes out from the reset. So, the same way the verification plan or might have taken uh, into account. So, with the certain initialization vectors or it may be from the reset condition, the verification is carried out. So, exactly the different scenario. So, when it is put into the real time application, we do not know what kind of, it is not always uh, the one which it is from the initialization factor or it may be the reset condition. So, there may be any environment or any cases which may occur during the real time application. So, those conditions might not have uh, included during the verification process, that is why there may be a chances of bugs which may be missed out during the verification plan. So, this is like a testing a PC's operating system right after it has been installed without checking or without any application installed on that. So, once the different applications were installed, then there may be a different bugs which may, which we may expect in the corresponding application. So, that is why this is due to uh, input or the device or the environment configuration which were missed out during the verification plan. So, in real world environment, uh, the design under test configuration become more random as the longer it is in use. We do not expect what kind of scenarios which may occur for a particular design. It may be a simultaneous application or it may be a some other scenario that we need to check during the verification plan that might not have checked during that that is why there may be a bugs during the real time application. So, we should randomize the entire environment configuration including maybe the length of the simulation or the number of devices and how they are configured. So, as we, we, are, we can see that for a particular uh, memory when we are using as and when the storage is keep on increasing. So, if the storage is almost about to cover entire uh, memory, then what happens the system becomes slower. So, the thing is we need to consider all possible configuration during the verification environment, so that we can modify as and when during the design phases, then, then we, there will not be any failure after the release of the design. So, that is why we need to look those conditions also into account. So, there may be a errors or violations or some protocol exceptions due to which there may be a bugs expected in the design. When a device such as PC or a cell phone locks up, the only cure is shutdown and reset. We sometimes what happens if it is not working, so we will not have a patience to wait until it reboot. So, suddenly what we will do, we will start shutdown or we will reset it. So, may be a piece of that means why this is happening because uh, there may be a bug because some piece of logic that experiences some sort of error during the uh, design itself and that is prevented the device from working correctly. So, there may be a bug. So, due to that what happens there may be a stuck at the when the certain application is running on that but it might have released after some times, but some we feel that instead of we do not have a patience what we will do, we will make sure that it is restart or shut down that is only the solution. So, if something can go wrong in real hardware, look at all the errors that can occur. What happens if the bus transaction does not complete that also we need to consider. If an invalid operation encountered what may be the next uh, how it is behaving or the does the design specification state that two signals are mutually exclusive. If so, drive them, drive them both and make sure the device continues to operate properly and checker code look for those violations. So, there are different component in the test bench that may be a checker. We should include all possible combinations of expected errors, so that the bugs can be observed during the verification phases. So, your code should at least print a warning message. So, if there is something goes wrong, 
So, and preferably generate an error and bring down the test. That means, there may be a scenario which uh, during the uh, working uh, model, there may be a scenario which if there may be a stuck or something happens. If that is the case, we should create or uh, we should uh, generate certain warning message where it is processing something, some error encoder. That means, we should have a certain kind of indication to the uh, user. Uh, there may be a possible bug, it will take some amount of time. So, they have to wait for it. So, these are the scenarios which we need to consider during the verification uh, process. And if not, because real time application bugs may come from any point of time or it may be any scenario. If that is the case, how to handle the uh, design? That is what we have to look for. And considering delays and synchronization, so how fast uh, should your test bench generate the stimulus? Always use constraint random delays to help catch protocol bugs. A test that uses the shortest delay runs fastest of course, but it would not create all possible combination of test bench, test vectors or a stimulus. A block may function correctly for all possible permutation of stimulus from a single interface but there may be a error which can be encountered when transactions are flowing into multiple inputs. So, this type that means single point of time when it is operating with a single block as such there may not be any problem. When it is interfaced with the many blocks then there is a maximum errors which we may expect. Try to coordinate the various drivers so that they can communicate at different timing rates and try to understand how each block is communicating with respect to each other and how the signals are uh, moved within the blocks. And what if the inputs arrive at the fastest possible rate, but the output being throttled back to the slower rate? What happens in that scenario? And what if stimulus arrives at multiple inputs concurrently, simultaneously if there is a inputs which is coming in, then what may be the scenario? What if it is staggered with the different delays? And so, make use of the functional coverage to measure what combinations have been randomly generated. So, keeping these parameters in mind, we will try to modify the verification environment or the verification test cases. Ultimately, we have to see that during verification phase also, there may not be any bugs which are encountered, but when the system is used in real time application, then also the bugs are not initiated. I mean, if at all there is a bug, there may be possibility that the verification environment might have missed out those verification checks. That is why we need to create a entire verification plan, keeping all this parameter into account, how the same input is getting the multiple signals at the same time, how fast the test bench is generating the input vectors, how the outputs are producing. If there is a concurrent uh, process is happening, what it has to be done. So, everything need to be considered during the verification plan. Accordingly, we have to build the verification environment. So, finally, we have uh, functional coverage. So, as of we are interested to know that it is a measure of what functionality or feature of the design have been exercised by the test. So, that is what the verification process continues here. So, there are certain steps which are involved in measuring and using the functional coverage which are. So, we need to add a code to the test bench to monitor the stimulus going into the device which is under test. Observe the reaction and response to determine the functionality. Run several simulations, each with a different seed. Generate report and analyze the result and find how to create new stimulus to reach the untested condition and logic. So, we have to make sure that the functional coverage, if at all you are achieving it 100 percent, it is trying to cover all the possible combination or the condition within the design. So, we will make sure that there is no bug after checking all possible combination of the input condition. 
So, that is ultimate aim is nothing but 100 percent for flood for coverage we need to meet it, but how efficiently we are considering that is the parameter. So, the functional coverage what we are considering here is, so during verification process if the particular design need to be verified with say 100 features, but out of 100 features 900 features or an out of 100 features only 90 features are observed and those 90 features are verified during the verification process. So, the remaining 10 features might not have covered during the verification process. So, we think that only the 10 features are there and 10 features are verified, but in when it is used in the real time application. So, the 91th scenario may be the 10 any one feature which exists among the 10 features which are not covered under such condition what happens there may be a bug. So, that is why the feedback from the functional coverage is very much important. So, we need to see that the verification process that means, we need to look for the very feedback from the functional coverage then we need to generate the stimulus. So, in order to understand that as the functional coverage asymptotically approaches its limits. So, one can change the test to find new approaches to reach uncovered areas of the design. So, the remaining 10 features which were not covered then we need to think it of that how those 10 features also can be covered. So, that is what we call that is called as a coverage driven verification. That means, after obtaining the functional coverage, so based on the analysis of that again we are creating the environment. So, to test the remaining features that is what it is called as the coverage driven verification and it is a powerful methodology that can help to achieve verification goals faster and more efficiently. So, coverage feedback is the process of using the coverage metrics to guide and optimize the verification process. So, if at all we consider this coverage driven verification methodology, so that is some kind of feedback from the functional coverage which help us to cover 100 percent within a short amount of time as it is expected. So, it can help to adjust the test bench parameter and prioritize the test scenarios and focus verification resources and time on the areas that need more attention. So, whatever the features which were left out. So, once you have a understanding or analysis of the feedback from the functional coverage that is a scenario which we were missed that can be handled it. It can also help to identify and eliminate unnecessary or ineffective tests and achieve the verification closer criteria. So, some modification can be done. So, depending upon the feedback from the functional coverage and ultimately we see that the 100 percent coverage is obtained within a small amount of time. So, this is how the functional coverage is going to be obtained for a given particular verification design. So, next uh, we will just see that what is the test bench. So, right now what we have discuss discussed is uh, what are the different guidelines the verification engineer has to do it. That means, before he verify any particular design, he also see that what are the design specification accordingly he has to verify it. So, in order to perform that, so the first step is nothing but the corresponding stimulus need to be generated and those stimulus which are given to design in the test and the output are observed and compared. So, if there are bugs encountered that need to be considered and again modification need to be uh, done with respect to design or the verification environment has to be modified to cover all possible features which are existing in the circuit. So, there may be a different way in which the stimulus can be considered. It may be a direct testing, it may be a random testing. So, there are some limitation with respect to direct testing that is why the people will go for a random testing. So, random testing instead of going for generating the completely random test vectors, it is better to have the constraint. So, for what functionality you are looking for. So, the most effective one is nothing but the constraint random testing methodology. So, 
also will make use of that. So, ultimately the 100 percent coverage is going to be obtained with the constraint random testing and then the functional coverage we will see that and we have to observe and analyze certain feedback from the functional coverage and then create an environment where the missed out test cases can be considered and again the uh, test environment is created to observe the complete features of the design. That is what it is called as a coverage briefing. So, next we will move on to the uh, layered test bench what it is. So, a key concept for any modern verification methodology is the layered test bench. So, as the name indicates layered means one by one here. So, the layer test bench is the heart of the verification environment in the verification methodology manual that is VMM and it helps to make task easier by dividing the code into smaller one that can be developed separately. It is instead of creating the test bench for a complete design. So, we will divide it and make sure that the entire complexity of the test bench has been reduced. So, instead of writing a single routine that can randomly generate all types of stimulus both sometimes legal and illegal. So, in these test vectors which we are not interested. So, we make sure that instead of going for a single routine. So, we will go for a layered one wherein it is going to be divided into number of small blocks that is what layered test bench. It consists of different layers such as signal, command, functional and other scenario layers. So, one by one we will just consider here what is the uh, signal layer, command level and functional level. So, before we go to the different levels just a simple example which is given uh, for a layered test bench here is where it is driving the AMBA protocol bus pins. So, the test vectors or a test bench is written. Uh, for the particular AMBA physical bus, it is just understanding of what is layered one. So, which consists of some address, write operation, data, address bus, read operation, enable, reset, clock. So, there is a block, initial block what we have here uh, to initialize the reset condition and this is a block where we are checking the data to be written on to the corresponding memory location that is address and data with respect to write and select operation select enable or select 0. And this block is uh, toggle enable where it is generating the clock cycle uh, for a particular value how you, you are going to generate the clock signal. And here check the result that means for a particular uh, memory location of a given address the corresponding data is written or not. If that is the case you display it success, if not you just message what is the wrong value in the memory. So, this is the entire test bench which we can consider which is written in a single routine. So, there this is just for an example. So, there may be a scenario where as the complexity increases the test bench which we can expect is also of more complex. So, instead of this it is divided into number of small blocks in the case of layered one what we will do, we will write a task here. So, this task is for generating the clock as well as address uh, generation of the corresponding memory location. So, we will write a task as write and we will just define what is the address and the corresponding data with how many number of bits which we are looking for the address of 16 bit and data of 32 bit. So, wherein we will check with respect to corresponding address and the data which is going to be written onto the corresponding memory location and here we define the clock. That means, it is divided into the task here where it is separately written and it is under the task. So, this task is responsible to generate the clock as well as for the identification of the memory location. So, in the main test bench what we will do? just we will assign the corresponding address line read and write operations enable and clock. Here we just write we will make use of the task which we were written as a write with a single line that is corresponding address and the data write the corresponding data into the memory. So, that means this write is going to be here and it execute all the set of instructions and it is continuing with the thing. 
So, in the main test module, we will just write that the data which is written onto the corresponding memory location. If it is so, a success, success message is going to be printed, if not wrong. That means, the entire routine or the entire test bench which is written for AMBA protocol or AMBA peripheral bus. So, there may be a possibility of mistakes which may happen, then you entirely have to look for the complete test bench. Instead of that, you divide it into number of blocks. Here the task for certain application, another task for other application. Then you make use of those tasks in the main test bench model. Then if there is a wrong, you can individually handle it. That is what the purpose of layered test bench. So, by taking the common actions such as reset, bus reads and writes, putting them into a in a routine, test becomes more efficient and less mistakes. So, we can expect that it is efficiently executed. So, the even if there is a some mistake that can be realized and handled individually. So, that is why we can say that better to go for a layered test bench. So, wherein you have a certain advantages to handle the complex design. So, entire <coughs> test bench includes certain layers here that is signal, it may be command or it may be functional or scenario layers. That is what we are going to consider here. So, the entire uh, uh, different layers what we have mentioned here. So, this is the design under test, it may be any kind of block or it may be SPD design or ASIC design whatever it is. So, as a verification engineer, you need to create a verification environment to test the design under test effectively. So, this is considered as a signal layer, it is a lower level, it consists of design under test and there are some signals that connects to the test bench. So, still higher level there is something called as a command layer and some of the inputs that is what we have a component here a driver. So, these inputs are driven by the driver and it will be given to the design under test. The output of the design under test that drives the monitor that takes the signal transaction or the transitions and group them together into a corresponding command. That means, there is a some kind of commands or the signals which are coming or a driven by the driver which is given to the DUT and the output of DUT is going to be observed at the monitor. So, there are some assertions here, they are nothing but more concise representation of the functional checker what you are going to verify it. So, the next level is nothing but the functional layer. So, in the functional layer, so we have certain blocks that may be a agent or a scoreboard or the checker. So, the commands which are generated here, the agent is uh, sending the commands to the driver as well as the scoreboard. That means, it is going to generate the number of test input vectors to the driver and those input vectors are applied to the design under test. At the same time, those input vectors are also applied to the scoreboard. So, the predicted value will be stored in the scoreboard and this is the checker. So, monitor is going to observe the output, the output of the DUT that is whatever the output signal which we are getting from the design under test will be compared into the checker. So, the reference value will be stored in the scoreboard. So, these commands are also sent to the scoreboard that predicts the results of the transaction, what it has to perform. So, it compares both the command signal from the scoreboard, this is the predicted value and this is the observed value and then it is going to produce the certain output. So, the next higher level is nothing but scenario. So, we have taken from the design under test to the top model or it may be other way also. So, scenario layer in which we have the generator. So, here the functional uh, layer whatever it is considered below the scenario which is driven by the uh, generator in the scenario. So, that means it generates the number of stimulus and it is given to the agent and he is responsible to send it to the scoreboard as well as to the driver. So, it uses the generator to produce the sequence of transactions that are applied to the functional layer. So, functional layer as well as to the command level from the agent, we are sending the signal. Then we have the 
test bench, entire test bench we can say that the blocks in the test bench environment are written at the beginning of the development of the design. During the project they may evolve and may add functionality, but these blocks should not change for a individual test. So, test or a verification environment is created once. So, this is done by leaving the hooks in the port so that the test can change the behavior of these blocks without having to rewrite again and again it is not necessary to for the model. So, the individual blocks can be modified and based on the design verification. So, when you come consider a complete test bench with all the layers which we have considered here it may be a signal layer or a command layer or a functional layer or it may be a scenario layer. So, the test layer at the top it contains the constraint to create the stimulus. So, here we define what may be the constraints what the people are looking for what kind of bugs or what kind of functionality we are expecting from the design process. It is a program actually these are all the different class which we are going to consider. It can interact with all the layers and this layer allows to pass directed commands to the functional and the command layer. So, ultimately we have the functional coverage here that measures the progress of all the test in the in fulfilling the verification plan requirements. So, based on this functional coverage we see that how efficiently the verification of the design is carried out. So, if there is some modification is required based on the analysis of the functional coverage again the test environment can be created in a different way. So, these are entire uh, test bench or a full test bench with all different layers. So, how the design and the test is going to be verified with a different test bench component with a different component or with the different layers and this is the test or the program which is responsible to generate the constraints with respect to the particular design. So, individually that means we have a layered block that means it may be from the signal that means instead of considering the entire verification environment. So, that is divided into number of blocks from the design and the test how the test pattern need to be generated here and these input test patterns are generated based on the constraints which are defined in the test and there are some classes these are the component we can say that, but when you write a very log code for the verification they will be written in terms of a class or a task. So, separately we are handling with the generate block, agent, driver, scoreboard, checker and monitor. If there is some modification need to be happened individually these blocks are going to be modified or altered. Accordingly we will check it out the functional verification coverage. So, based on the functional coverage uh, response we will see that how the verification plan that need to be modified that is what we just consider entirely here how it is going to be uh, uh, verification plan is going to be considered. So, some of the uh, test bench components the other way what we will have considered layer ways how the layer test bench is there. So, just we say that a component we just name this monitor, driver, generator, scoreboard or design under test and what is the environment or a test these are just called as a components. So, individually when the system Verilog is used for the verification process. So, there will be a set of class or you can say that every model or every component of the test bench is defined using the class. So, then we will just see that how the interfacing need to be happened with respect to all the blocks and how the verification plan is going to be continued. So, there is a transaction uh, is, is nothing but where you can expect here that this is a transaction that holds the structure that is used to communicate with the design under test. As it is uh, considered generate is a class it is responsible for generating and sending it to the driver and the driver is the one where it is receives the transaction from the generator and it is and pushes the packet level data in inside the transaction into the pin level to the design and the test. And then monitor is nothing but it is going to observe the output from the design and the test and it will see that what are the output which we are going to obtain from this 
and the output are going to be verified with the scoreboard here. The scoreboard is nothing but again a class in the system array log which we can define. What are the predicted output for a given uh, input vector which we have provided during the test environment? Those outputs are compared uh, in the che checker and based on that it is going to tell us that whether the functional uh, coverage how much whether we are able to achieve it or not. So, agent is a class or container class that groups all generator driver and monitor blocks which are there in the uh, test bench environment. So, these are the different blocks which we can consider here uh, from the top model to the uh, lower level. So, environment is nothing but uh, again one of the environment clause that serves as a container for the higher level components such as agent scoreboards. So, the test is nothing but it is uh, in charge of setting up the test bench and also the process of building the test bench components whatever which we whatever the component which which, which we have de, uh, declared in the test bench environment and also it is responsible for, for initializing the simulation driving. So, the top model what we have is nothing but the test bench underscore top. So, this is the file at the top that con connects the design and the test with the help of all the component which we have de uh, defined in this case. So, this is what the program. So, the test is direct that means, the test is connected to the design and the test with the help of different layers and each layer consists of different test bench component. So, each component is responsible for performing certain kind of operation that is what we, we, we have considered here how exactly the test bench is going to be working out. So, this is what the verification environment every engineer has to create as such it is not necessary to create a verification environment for a individual block. So, only small changes with respect to the test bench component need to be modified and ultimate aim is nothing but the verification functional coverage looking at the functional coverage again he can plan how he can modify the entire block may be related or may not be related uh, to all the blocks and he is going to see that how best he can uh, test the design which is under test. So, that he can achieve the 100 percent coverage. So, this is what just a uh, introduction of how the verification environment exists uh, for a particular design. So, once it is done, so there are different uh, phases of simulation environment. So, in which we coordinate the test bench, so that all the code for the project works together. That is what we are ultimately, we, we need to integrate all the test components or the components which are there in the different layers need to work together. The three primary phases are build, run and wrap up. So, each is in, uh, divided into a smaller steps. So, first one is the build phase at it is responsible or again there are different steps which is followed the in the build phase that is nothing but generate the configuration. So, randomize the configuration of the DOT and the surrounding environment. Then build the environment in the sense allocate and connect the test bench components based on the configuration, reset the design and the test and based on the generated configuration from the first step that is what we initialization is done load the design under test command register. So, during the run phase it has the following steps start the environment that is run the test bench components such as bus functional models and uh, stimulus generators and run the test that is the start the test and then wait for the complete and observe the output. So, the wrap up phase has certain steps here. So, after the lowest layer completes wait for the final transaction to drain out the design and the test and once the duty is idle sweep the test bench for loss for loss data. Sometimes the scoreboard holds the transaction that never come out perhaps because they were dropped by the design and the test. If it is uh, failed be sure to delete uh, so that the functional coverage result you should not consider the same. Uh, value. So, it is not applicable just you make sure that it is going to be deleted. So, make use of the uh, code reuses. So, in order to verify the complex design of course, there may be a hundred of features that need to write hundreds of direct testing. 
it is not suitable way as we just discussed here is direct testing is not suitable for the complex design as well as it takes more amount of time and we need to generate all possible combination of the uh, direct test and we need to observe and it is basically for the intended design where the designer has to sit and manually check out what is the output and he has to verify it. So, if the constraint random stimulus, uh, stimulus is used, you will write for a fewer test. Of course, it is an efficient way in which we can say that the verification is going to be done with a 100 percent coverage. So, the real work is put into construct, uh, constructing the test bench, which contains all the lower test bench layers, which we mentioned. It may be a scenario, its functional command and the signal layers. And this test bench code is used by all the tests and so it remains generic. So, need not have to check again and again, we will make sure that it is common for all the tests which we can going to be verified. If you know you will be creating a few dozen tests, there is high payback in making a more sophisticated test bench. So, make sure that how efficiently we are going to uh, build the uh, verification environment that means how we are going to create the test bench environment for the uh, completion of the verification process completely. So, as uh, the test bench performance as we can see that so entire output you can say the design under test is going to be verified with a 100 percent uh, functional coverage does means as such there is no bugs and it is going to meet all the features which may encountered in the design is working fine. So, in order to do this, the test bench performance is basically depending upon that, that is what it is mentioned. So, during the verification plan, I should know that what need to be verified, if not, so the specification may tell something and it will continue to the next phase and if at all the certain cases are not verified during the verification process there may be a failure. That is why the performance that means test bench performance is a big task here. So, you need to create a environment whatever the block which we have shown here with the different layers and the test bench component, we have to make sure that we are going to get the almost 100 percent functional coverage. So, as it is considered with respect to direct testing or a constraint random testing which is suitable and how effective effectively we can make use of the constraint random testing for achieving the good verification plan. So, there are some limitations with respect to direct testing. So, that is why we can better go for a constraint random testing. So, of course, it uh, as it is listed out, it will send a good amount of time to understand wherein the constraint testing it is an effective method to achieve the coverage goals faster. So, it helps to identify even corner cases also. So, there are some several steps that we need to consider here because the initial steps that we have to we have undergone to understand the uh, constraint random test is required. Of course, the initial time what we spend for the constraint random test is uh, that is a lacuna, but of course, once it is done the amount of time it is going to take to cover 100 percent coverage is very less. So, the test bench performance we can consider with respect to constraint random test and it is preferably we will go for the constraint random testing. So, as we just consider what are the different layer test bench, what are the different components which the test bench environment or a verification environment consists of and how best we are creating the stimulus. So, that is according to the goal which is specified in the verification plan, that is what we need to understand here completely. So, as we can see that finally, the constraint stepping is the functional cover. So, this task starts with the creation of a strong verification plan with clear goals that can be easily measured. So, you need to create the system variable of code. Next is nothing but we need to create a system variable of code that adds the instrumentation to the environment. So, whatever the scenario we have seen right now with respect to different a test bench layers and test bench components, then we will make use of the system Verilog code to write the model or the class for every test component and we will make sure that once it is uh, incorporated in the verification environment. 
so we see that how the verification plan is going to be achieved with a certain amount of uh, uh, time which is given for the verification purpose so this is what the basic idea of uh, entire verification uh, guidelines and the verification process so finally it is essential that you need to analyze the result to determine if you have met the goals or not and how you should go into modify if at all there is not corresponding goal is met that is what the intention of the verification engineer so what before we start with uh, what are the different components how it has to be handled so you need to create a verification environment so with the certain layers from the lower level to the top level or it may be a different components which are involved in the test bench we need to make sure that how effectively we are making use of the uh, test bench component and accordingly we will have to make use of the system Verilog in order to build those components. So we will just look that what are the different uh, data types which are involved in the uh, system verification. So before that I will just conclude that we have seen that the continuous growth in the complexity of the electronic designs requires a modern systematic and automated approach to create the test benches. The cost of fixing a bug grows from each step of specification to RTL that is from the RTL coding it may be synthesis, fabrication and finally into the user's hand. So the direct tests have certain limitations and that is why in as the complexity increases it is better to go for the constraint random testing. So we need to just create what are the verification so produce the uh, robust design must use the constraint random stimulus combined with the functional coverage to create the widest possible range of stimulus. So now this is just the understanding of what is verification environment, how the design under test is going to be verified by using the different test bench components and how those test bench components are assigned with the different layers and how individual component is going to be handled. So in the VLSI design flow the verification is done with the help of system Verilog. So we will see that how the system Verilog can be helpful for the verification purpose. That is what the next topic we have under the same model 3. So that is different data types which are used in the system Verilog.